Who are you tie. rooting for? Stir fry tie, obviously. The goat. Let's fucking go. This is light work for stir fry. About a cook Cupid. The Sanic. All right. Wow. Pink Pony actually taking it over Buster McNutt. Again, we don't have like a ton of fast bowlers in the region, so I'm wondering how comfortable. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> comfortable Ty is with this matchup. It would be nice if we had like a really consistent Falcon. I feel like this character is so common. I think Falcon and Sheik are some of the characters that you just need to have like some degree of matchup knowledge against. And Wolf. Yeah, and Wolf and Cloud. Wow, Stir Fry Ty is actually just holding in on these um, hits at high percent just to allow Cupid to um, get an easy knee. Yeah, it seems like he's not used to his kind of like burst options being interrupted like that. I think he'll get used to it. But... Good SDI out of the up air by uh, Cupid. Oh. Nice, the DI out there saved him. No jump. Ooh, doesn't get the confirm, but the oh, F smash will do it. F smash will reverse it. It's a nice clank. Oh, almost died. Ooh, no confirm off the uh, the down B. Questionable up B from Cupid. And these like random burst options have just been working. Side B, um, down B, a couple of the different ones have been have been working. No. Okay, no punish there from Cupid actually should have gotten out of that. Oh, this is bad. Oh, <laughs> oh and missing it though. Me. Oh, and the F the up toe is actually a really good option. One second. <laughs> As Nurse was explaining, um, the Alberta region doesn't really have a dedicated fastball um, player, so it, this first match is actually um, kind of exposing Ty um, that he's not really familiar with the fall speed of characters like Captain Falcon. So it's really going to be interesting how um, Ty is going to adjust over the course of these next few matches to see how he could combo Falcon. Great edge guard with the up B into the F smash. And Cupid takes it game one. One thing that um, Ty needs to do, especially as um, Sonic, is he has to be really careful of um, trying to approach um, Falcon just head on. Um, I feel like Ty is really going to have to try and space and bait out a lot of options from Cupid um, in this particular match. Um, just It's okay to be patient. It's okay to wait for Cupid to do something. Um, because... 
Cupid is one of is a type of player to especially if he knows that he could get away with it, he will get he will do an option. And if you aren't going to be punishing it, then you're just gonna be in a whirlwind of pain. I'm back, sorry. No, you're good. I almost died of dehydration. Oh, I thought you needed to go to the bathroom or something. <laughs> no, I just got really thirsty. <laughs> um. So Cupid took the first game. That makes sense. Yes. Um. Uh, well, I was just explaining that, like, especially with um, Ty being unfamiliar with the match, he really needs to be patient with um, some of the options that he's doing. Um, well, especially so against someone like Cupid. Yeah, Sonic needs to play pretty clean, uh, just because Falcon will kill so much earlier than Sonic does. Like, that needs to be a kill. <laughs> and yeah, that needs to be converted. So he's doing a good job putting the pressure on, but when you're killing at like 150 range and Falcon's gonna kill you with up throw at 90, you just need to be winning more neutral. Because Sonic's combo game also isn't insane, so it definitely comes down to yeah. like, safe, neutral, and, and just clean advantage there. Yeah, and um, I guess just just talking generally, um, because I know that there's a lot of people who are um, newer to HDR or like... Oh, that killed! Uh, want or like wanting to improve. Um, I think a lot of players oh, have nice. a hard time. A lot of players have a hard time um, playing a two-player game. Um, you have to realize that the other person is also playing chess with you as well. Um, so you can't just be like running in, throwing out hitboxes, expecting you to be getting a big combo just because you get one hit off. Um, yeah, I think there's a degree of like, you just have to realize how to make it a one-player game. You know what I mean? Because it's yeah. not inherently like that, but if you play the game right, you can cover every option in a lot of scenarios. And just extending that way is how you find the most value in, issue, in HDR. I know and that like, um, your specialty is also sports psychology too, so maybe you could weigh in a little bit of your knowledge. That was a big <laughs> forward air spike by Ty, evening the, evening the set. What what about sports like do you wanna know? Um like how I guess when it comes to like for players that want to improve and just don't seem like you know, may maybe it's the character, maybe it's mm -hmm. XYZ reason, like how do you get yourself out of that um talk about like I don't know, like maybe this character sucks, but maybe it's maybe a changed mindset about how you're viewing the game yeah i think a, a big thing for a lot of people is like playing to improve but playing without purpose right oh that killed holy shit um but yeah like playing without purpose so what that means is like you're getting a ton of reps in like you're playing a bunch of games but you're not playing those games with any intention Right? Like, you're not learning from them. You're just playing and hoping that through osmosis, you just get better. And so a way to fast track um, a lot of improvements is to have, like, specific plans for what you want to work on during play sessions. And, you know, players who are better, who, who have been doing it longer, will do this automatically. But going into practice sessions... And if you're getting edge guarded a lot, recognizing that and being like, okay, getting edge guarded is something I need to work on. Either go into the lab or talk to the person you're playing against and be like, okay, how am I getting edge guarded? What can I do to avoid it? Instead of just hoping that you just start winning eventually. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and it is hard to recognize why you're losing. You know what I mean? Like a lot, I think that's a skill that a lot of people don't have is they'll lose a game and they won't know why. They'll just be like, ah, he was better or that move is dumb or whatever. Those aren't really reasons. <laughs> uh, and there still is a reason you lost. And that can be compatible with like a move is dumb. 
So if there's a move that's broken, let's say, like, oh, I lost the game because I got hit with fucking Krom back air and it's fucking huge and kills it like 90. Uh, and that's a hard move to deal with. It's okay to be mad that that's annoying because it is. But you also have to recognize, okay, how can I adjust my playstyle? Because I know this move is going to be coming. Uh, I'm and guessing then, Cube is still in the game, right? Yes. So. Okay. Uh, well, Winner's Finals is... just ended. Got it. Who took it? Uh, three, two, Caterpie. Who did really? Caterpie win with? Uh, me brawler. Jesus. Real me brawler yeah, hours. Yeah, it was. It was actually a really good set. That's sick. Yeah. That is sick. I think. Thank you for dropping the knowledge on us. Yeah. Nurse, I think Anytime. I also think that's going to be the last one that I stream because from here on out, it should be loser semis. So whether Cupid wins or loses, everything should just be on his uh, stream, right? Yeah. Should be good. All right, cool. Thanks for streaming. That's sick. Oh my gosh, yeah. I got mod checked yeah, by saying I will kill you for sending <laughs> his message. <laughs> I adjust my playstyle. Did you mean to yell at HDR devs until they fix it? I mean, there's a degree of like. I think in fighting games in particular. Um. Oh my gosh! Couple, wait, that actually was a huge gimp by Ty. It is good. Um, there's a couple different kinds of players for fighting games in terms of like, what characters they play, or what archetypes they play, or what they enjoy. There's definitely the like archetype enjoyers, the like, characters that like players that like grapplers or players that like rush down or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think most players have like leaning in terms of what archetype they enjoy. Um, but there's also like character loyalists who just like one character and just grind it out. There are people who switch around a lot just based on how the game feels and what they like. Yeah. Uh, and there are like top tier Andes who will just pick whoever's good. I think all of those are reasonable strategies. We've seen people succeed with everything. And and to a degree it depends what your goals are. Like if your if your goal is to be number one best player in the world, I think it's okay to have a secondary of a character that's not that good. But you should absolutely, absolutely have a top tier in the back pocket. Yeah, I mean, just look at MKLeo. I think MKLeo is a really good um, example of that. Um, he has like picks like Byleth. He has picks like Joker, and sometimes he'll even pick out the Corn, especially against someone like Sonix. Yeah, and I mean, like, even if you look at Ultimate's top players right now, it's a lot of solo mains, right? Yeah, it's a lot of solo mains because people are just used to. To doing what they like and with so many characters in the game it's hard to main multiple characters because there's so many fucking matchups like yeah. it's hard to know 80 matchups as is imagine knowing 80 matchups with two characters um and that's also why in ultimate the simpler characters tend to be better like snake rob steve game and watch all do relatively the same thing versus every character obviously there's some variance but the game plan is relatively the same. And so those characters are at an advantage because even in matchups they're not that familiar with, they still can implement the fundamentals that they've been practicing the whole time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I. It's just crazy to, to me that, you know, like over the course of... Oh, wow, that was crazy. He messed over up Over the, the course here. of, you know, the three games, Ty has adjusted really well to how Cupid is actually playing. Mm-hmm. He's gotten Oh my used... gosh! That's crazy. And he got the ledge. He's gotten used to a lot of these aggressive options and is pressuring Cupid really well off stage with these edge guards. That's been the biggest difference. Ty is a good example of someone who plays vastly different. Oh He's my surprised. gosh. And the up B will actually secure the stock yet again. Cupid needs to adjust it to... needs to adjust his recoveries because you could not be getting gimped that much with Sonic up B. Um, Ty plays Little Mac in Smash Ultimate and plays Zangief in Street Fighter 6. Hey, yo, let's go! So it, it's like a vast range of archetypes. I 
Absolutely. So it's interesting to see where people land. Uh, and, and oftentimes I'll tell people, you should pick a character that feels good and be good enough to make a top char a, a top tier be a character that feels good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like you can have your soul main, like in uh, in ultimate, the character that feels the best to me is like Greninja. <laughs> um, even though Greninja's like not great. Yeah. Uh, but he's usable, and you can definitely play Greninja with a secondary. Um. So, uh, again, it depends on your goals, but also it depends on what you're willing to do and and like how good you need to be fundamentally to to make what you want to happen happen. I is really putting Cupid against the wall right now. Um, oh, he he he's not gonna get an attack out of Uppy though. Oh, and wow, the that even still. And I think Cupid SD'd that first stock actually. He actually did, yeah. Oh, no follow up off the F smash. Could have been huge. Oh, it doesn't get the side B after the down smash. No tech from Cupid, and the jump expended. That should be it if Taj just grabs ledge. Or, or down smashes. Either smash. works. Either works. That's a huge, huge overcommitment from Cupid. Absolutely could have just gone to the ledge instead of aggressing. Oh, the miss is so oh bad! Oh my gosh. No, Cupid! Cupid with the unfortunate SDs. Cupid actually doing his best to lose this one. <laughs> Unfortunately. If he comes back, though, he will have defeated Ty and himself. Oh, Ty, Ty definitely knows that, you know. Wait, you this just is big, wait. Though. Yeah, Ty doesn't really have to commit to anything here because of the big stock lead, but you don't want to get complacent and just let these kind of like tit for tat things add up. Nice, get up attack and great call out. Oh, that was great up air by Cupid. Good job. Should be the knee. He's gonna live. Right back to the ledge. Cupid. The knee should kill here. Oh, and the, the weak end of the strong. And so despite the SDs, Cupid has brought this to the last stock. Oh, that platform rising too just gives a little bit of breathing. Oh, and Ty messes moves. up the tech chase, but Cupid messes up the combo off the side B. Only goes for the fair. Could have got more. Oh my god. Fair still not gonna kill. Mix up off stage. The down smash down is smash going to it. do it. Cupid up he's a little bit high. Probably trying to go for the grab box, and Ty is gonna take it after some unfortunate SDs.